Well, joining me in the studio to discuss the issue are Santok Singh, member of the Sikh Youth Service, and Pinky Tour of the International Sikh Youth Federation. Hello. Hello. Now, Mr. Singh, we've just seen a film where young Sikhs are returning to their roots. How deeply rooted is this revival, would you say? A Sikh youth who are now returning to their roots. Um, the, the revival, as you suggested, is a revival which has been going on for some time now. Not just it didn't start in 80, 1984, perhaps it accelerated in 1984. And the revival is such that it is very, very deep rooted towards orthodoxy. These youngsters have seen the world from a British or ethnocentric point of view. They have seen how world currents are are moving. They are much more educated and they are much more intelligent and they have seen what Sikhism has to offer uh, in terms of religion and as a, res as a result of that it is very very deep. Ms. Tour, now you you're involved with an organization that deals with youth Sikh. Um, how permanent is this resurgence would you say? I, say, I mean it's not actually a passing phase this is definitely a permanent thing like um, Mr Singh said it is very deep rooted even like for myself I mean before 1984 I was a student at, at school in the sixth form and I, religion was like the furthest thing from my mind I mean the most thing I was interested in is becoming as much westernized as I possibly could and then like the storming of the temple ab absolutely devastated my family and hence got through to me as well and I just thought my religion at this moment was like just up in the air and the insecurity actually really got to me so the um the, on the deep root aspect I'd say it was definitely very deep rooted indeed. Is, is Khalistan the, the politics going away from the religious aspect of Sikhism is Khalistan play an important part in this revival? I'd say it does yeah because um Khalistan is is an aspect of politics in religion. To me, religion and religion and politics play are one role. Play one role, okay? So it's like saying, um, to me, religion is Khalistan. The future of my religion at the moment is a Khalistan state. So, so this revival, what I'm trying to get at is that the, the young, say, in this country or indeed all over the world, reverting back to Sikhism has to do with the with the need for a homeland. Would you agree with that? Um, to an extent, uh, when a Sikh takes baptism, he takes nectar, then he is told that Khalsa Divasi Anandpur Sahib, the home of the Khalsa is Anandpur Sahib. Anandpur Sahib is in the Punjab. The Punjab, call it Sikh state, call it Azad Punjab, is a spiritual homeland of the Sikh. A Sikh can be anywhere in the world, can be any nationality, he can be British, he can be American or Canadian, but it is spiritual link is with the land of the five rivers. But is Khalistan the answer? So, in other words, if you got Khalistan, yeah. would that be the end of the revival? Yeah, um, we're fighting for a cause at the moment, you see, and Khalistan is the cause we're fighting for. Now then, once, I mean, if you're fighting for something for so long, and once you get it, we're not going to exactly just sit down and let it rot away. I'm sure a Khalistan government would protect the Sikh interest as much as it possibly could. That is investing in itself, promoting the Sikh cause all over the world, yeah, allowing us to develop, allowing the Sikh religion to flourish, and embracing and encouraging the, um, the religion to as many people as possible. Would it stop the revival in this country? Uh, no, not necessarily, because uh, basically the spiritual homeland is there. One of the reasons why obviously Sikhs have now got up and saying, well, we are Sikhs, yeah, and because of the spiritual home and the Khalistan issue, but that is just one of the issues. The other major issue is for the fact for a long time though, over the last 10 or 15 years, the establishments over here in the UK have tried to adopt a policy of assimilation, where they have told all foreigners coming here that you are basically absolutely British. Forget about your culture, forget about your language, forget about your religion. However, they... Uh, young Sikhs and other young nationals have tried to adopt that path but now what has happened or what they have felt is that it doesn't matter how much you become westernized at the end of the day you will be told that you are basically black and therefore they need a self-identity in which to basically uh, formulate inner strength in themselves and this is one reason why they are turning to Sikhism and Sikhism is not a dying fad it will not just fizzle out it is here to stay the Sikhs who are the youth who are becoming Sikhs now are becoming very very strongly committed to Sikhism strongly committed to the religion Pinky you've been through this revival yourself that's right yeah um, how committed are you I mean, how far would you go towards 
Khalistan towards achieving this homeland. Um, Would you fight? Well, there's no, I mean, there's no, like, Hitchhiker's Guide to How to Make a Perfect Nation, but fi I don't think fighting is, is not, it's not, um, I don't think fighting is really an issue here. How far would I go to form a Khalistan? Um, I think the people, the people's will is what we're talking about, okay? The people themselves is what we're concerned with. They will decide when, how and why a Khalistan is formed, as far as I'm concerned. That's what but isn't your religion a disguise for your politics? No, I, don't, I wouldn't say it is. Religion and politics, for a Sikh, religion and politics go together. If anybody knows that, you see, the, whole, the holy sign for religion, for our Sikh religion, is a gunda. Now, there are two swords, one for politics and one for religion, which both cross each other. What that simply says is religion and politics, one culture, one way of life for a Sikh person. Mr. Mr. Singh, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to stop you there. Thank you very much indeed. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you.